Welcome into Seattle Seahawks today. I am Tom Downey here with the latest going on around the Seahawks. Some trade talk, a roster move, and maybe a new starter at corner. Let's begin with some of the trade rumors out there around the Seahawks, beginning with LJ Collier. Could the Seahawks trade him away? ESPN and the beat writers for each team named one candidate that the team could trade away. Collier was the pick for the Seahawks with ESPN's Brady Henderson. He is a former first round pick who has never lived up to expectations and has been a healthy scratch in four of the uh, six games so far this year for Seattle. He's relatively affordable for a new team, two years left, including this one, on his rookie contract. But after showing promise and growth and upside in 2020, well, now he's back behind Rasheem Green on the depth chart and is not contributing really at all for Seattle. A very big disappointment given that he was a first-round pick. In his rookie year, 2019, LJ Collier was a disaster. He was terrible. He offered next to nothing. In 2020, the 2019 29th pick, that's too many numbers, I'm sorry for that. Either way, the former first-rounder was better in the 2020 season, but he wasn't that great. I had thought... This was going to be a breakout year for LJ. That has not been the case, and he's slid down the regression curve, unfortunately, like the banana splits. So we'll spend some more time here on Collier, but what draft pick do you think he is worth right now? I assume nobody's going to say one, two, or three, so I should see maybe a four at the most, five, six, sevens in the comments. Get him in right now. And I'm sorry to say this. I truly am. I don't like cheering against players, but... So far, based on what we've seen from a first-round pick, he's a bust. That's not to say he can't change it, get it back, and be a, a good NFL contributor in Seattle or elsewhere, but he's a bust right now. And I don't think he'd fetch much in a trade. Could you find a team to give you a later day three pick? I think that's certainly possible. If he's not going to play for you, you know, maybe that is something you consider because Rasheem Green, Puna Ford, Al Woods, Brian Monet, even Robert Nicomdici have all played over Collier this year as a more, more interior. Again, it's kind of a, it's almost a 3-4 front for Seattle. Uh, you can kind of see how I'm playing around with the positions and groupings and everything's there. But uh, of this unit up here, a unit that goes 11 deep of players who play along the defensive line with Taylor you know, playing that stand-up edge role. Like, LJ Collier's your 11th best player. That's not anything. And certainly not something I think the Seahawks thought they were going to end up having. Even this time last year, I thought Collier was going to be, if not a full-fledged starter, a key rotation piece. Dude's been inactive. Now, Seattle hasn't shown interest in moving him so far, but this is the type of player they should probably consider. So what do you think? What do you want to do? with L.J. Collier. Get your votes in for me in the comments section. You can type in T for trade him or type in K for keep him. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down, and get your votes in. From trading away one defensive lineman to trading four a defensive lineman. This is Derek Barnett of the Philadelphia Eagles. So Bleacher Report went through to trade target for each NFL team. Some of them were not very good. Some of them were solid. I think the Derek Barnett side probably ends up falling a little bit more on the not what I would do category. They did cite the Seahawks' lack of sacks so far this year, and I understand. Look, Seattle has not had a great pass rush. They've been a bit inconsistent. I think part of that, a big part of that, is the not very good, you know, a, a cornerback play they've gotten out of some guys not named DJ Reed. But the sacks issues are fair. So, of course, the Seahawks then bring in a player with no sacks. Uh, that fills your sack issue. Oh, Derek Barnett in the past has been typically a 5-6 to six sack guy in his young NFL career. His contract is affordable, but I don't know how he fits in with this edge group. Now, as again, I, I'm grouping some players who get some more defensive tackle reps. Rasheem Green, Kerry Hyder kind of fit that category. Collier, if he ever plays again, too. But you got Benson Mayo, Carlos Dunlap, Daryl Taylor, Hyder, Robinson. That's actually not a bad edge group. I think part of the issues for Seattle is, A, you stop blitzing Jamal Adams, which I don't love. You probably haven't played Taylor, who appears to have avoided any major injury, thank God, on Sunday Night Football. 
You're not playing those good enough. You've been dropping Benson Mayo in coverage. Again, I don't really get that very much. And outside of DJ Reed and maybe Trey Brown, who we'll get to in a second, the cornerback grouping has not played great on the outside. I don't think it's a lack of talent on the pass rush side. I think it's some usage, deployment, efficiency, etc. that gives me concern. So I, I don't mind Seattle looking for help. I don't think edge, though, given they've got some older vets they've paid and some young guys on the roster, is the spot I would be pursuing in the end. If anything, maybe look for a more impactful three technique or another corner. So I want you guys to drop a name for me in the comment section. What player do you guys want to trade for? Get your votes in. Flood the comment section with your ideas. Pretend you're Pete Carroll, John Schneider, and play GM for me. Now, if you want to put your money where your mouth is, do it with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code you guys see on screen. That is Seahawks125. When you put down at least 100 bucks, you're going to get an extra 125 for free. That way, even if you miss a handful of bets, you got plenty of money left over. Earlier this year, I hit back-to-back five-team parlays. Since then, I'm two and three in back-to-back -back weeks on my picks. So here are my week seven ones. Dolphins, plus two and a half. I'm sorry, Seahawks fans. I have them losing, not covering against the Saints, minus four and a half. Plus the Niners winning. This is not a day in which you guys will like me, but it's just the way I'm betting. If you disagree, hey, go prove me wrong and make some money doing it with BetUS. Again, folks, it's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code is Seahawks125. As promised, let's talk now about cornerback Trey Brown. He took over at corner on the outside thanks to Sidney Jones' injury against the Steelers, and I was very impressed with how Trey Brown fared in that game. And I am of the mindset, ESPN uh, agreed in one of their recent articles from Brady Henderson, that given the Seahawks' issues at the position, Brown should keep starting unless he struggles. Unless he, you know, is terrible and you got to try something else again, I don't think Brown should come out of that lineup. I have been very impressed. In the, of course, just the one game, so I was very impressed, with how he played. Targeted five times against the Steelers, two completions for nine yards. That is it. Now, make no mistake, he's going to allow more yards in the future. You don't ever go two for five for nine yards every single time. But given the just massive issues for this Seahawks team at corner, I think you got to roll with Brown. After all, of your outside corners entering the preseason, Reed and Brown were the only ones on your roster. You traded for Jones, traded for Reed, signed Austin, and you, of course, signed a Kelly and traded him away. You, you also had Trey Flowers cut him. Now he's in the Bengals. You've overhauled this cornerback room in a span of like two and a half months which is an indication of, hey, you know, our corners aren't that good. I, I, I wanted to believe in Sidney Jones. I was hoping that a return could be the answer for him. So far, as we'll see in a second, it hasn't been. And if you guys want free Seahawks videos all year round, then hit that big red button and subscribe. Between me and Megan Payton, we've got you guys covered pretty much every single day. Let's spend some more time now on Sidney Jones, who I was pretty underwhelmed by as he got, got a chance to start a corner because Trey Flowers was also not it. Jones wasn't really it either in a limited opportunity. Targeted 20 times, allowed 15 completions, 174 yards, a much larger number than what you'd like. And not only that, there weren't any plays in the football. One touchdown, one pass breakup. It just it wasn't really working for Sidney Jones. And it might not work for Trey Brown. But I will say this. In the limited opportunity, the game, call it the half game, we saw out of Bram, that was much better corner play than what the Seahawks have seen in quite a while. So pick a CB2, because you're obviously not going to bench DJ Reed. Type TB, for you want it to be Trey Brown, or type in SJ, for you'd rather see Sidney Jones out there. Get your votes in right now. To wrap up today's video, we'll discuss the news of Jacob Eason's signing or claiming, whatever phrase you want to use. Uh, the Colts had waived Jacob Eason, hoping to get him back to the practice squad. Seattle said, not so fast. Let's bring the Washington kid 
home. Now, Eason did not pan out for the Colts full stop. It was not very good. He does have some raw talent. The arm is strong, but he also lost out on the number three quarterback job in Indy to seventh-round rookie Sam Ellinger and Brett Hundley, which eh, that's not what you want either. Eason did play this year. It's tough to really put too much stock in a five-pass effort. Even was only for 25 yards, two completions, and one INT. But maybe this is a decent move for Seattle. In fact, look, Eason has not really ever been the guy, but it was Jake Luton on the roster. So sure, why not? And I'm pretty sure uh, Luton will go back to the practice squad, blah, blah, blah. I think he still has some eligibility. So he actually might be the backup this upcoming week over Jacob Eason since Eason does not have the playbook yet. But he hasn't been good so far. Eason has never shown to be a good NFL quarterback. And frankly, I didn't even like him that much coming out of Washington. I didn't think he processed and triggered quick enough. I thought he had the arm, not enough else. Despite that, I do like this move by Seattle. You know what? He's free. Bring him in. I think he's better than Jake Luton. Give him a chance to show what he can do. If he ends up not being a piece okay, all you spent was a little bit of money. Like, that was it, and which you would have been paying Luton anyway. So, because of that, I like this move by Seattle. If you guys want consistent updates on all of their moves, hit that big red button and subscribe today at youtube.com slash SeahawksTV.